here and I am suffering from quite a stiff neck and uh, cervical spine, upper back, all the way down so I'm sure lots of you at home are in the same boat if you're working at home you're probably sitting on the sofa or not a really prepared desk so I'm going to take you through a little sequence which is just oh my god it's fantastic I was doing it earlier and it's going to open up the whole um, shoulders, neck, spine going to allow you to relax that jaw and just ease into it. Okay, so join me. Jump on your mat or blanket. Okay, taking the shoulders back and down, hands by the side of the body, just tip the chin towards the chest, then tip that head back, looking up between the eyebrows, back to centre, and then taking the head over to one side, so taking it over to the left, taking the left hand, up and holding the side of the head just taking the ear towards the shoulder lengthening stretching that neck out if you want more you can just change over sides whenever you're ready opposite hand to the side of the head gently tipping you can take the hand up to the shoulder and lengthen then take the hands in a basket behind the head taking the chin towards the chest. So these are just opening up the neck nice and gently before we move into anything more strenuous. And then keeping the hands together, clasp, tipping that chin up towards the sky, closing the eyes, looking between the eyebrows. Now pushing those palms out towards the body, bend the elbows. And just imagine that you're peeling the skin off the back of the shoulders. Now you can flex the shoulders too, alternating, pushing the shoulders out. Do that for as long as we want. And then just coming down into gentle squat. Stretching up and over, lengthening through the tips of the fingers. If our neck allows, we're going to look up towards the sky. Just bending those knees and we can flex the knees, just popping them up and down, just moving the hips around, whatever's comfortable for you. Move that neck. If it's uncomfortable to look up, that's okay. If you can't take the hand up and over, that's okay too. Just take it down to the waist. And we're just moving around, opening up the hips and the pelvis. Take the hands to the hips and back up again. Now clasping the hands behind the back, we're going to just move that head side to side. So again, just relaxing, opening up the hip, making sure the jaw is unclenched too. And this just opens up the yoni and the pelvic area. So changing over size again, having a little bounce, just allowing the hips, the knees to open, stretching up and over, relaxing that neck, looking both ways, whatever needs to happen for you. This is not a static practice. Make sure it's nice and fluid. You can keep moving. You can relax into each posture with the exhale. Hands to the waist and back, clasping those hands behind the back and slight back bend looking up. So now this is a little mini vinyasa which you are going to love. Hands up and over. So gentle back bend as much as is comfortable. Take the navel back to the spine. Hands down to the ground or the knees or shins if that's what's available. Onto the tips of the fingers straightening the back and now we're just going to gently bounce forwards backwards side to side so allow those hips to move bend the knees if that's what you want this is all about what feels comfortable for you all right so we want to be feeling this right down at the lumbar spine just lengthening stretching now i'm bouncing quite aggressively here you don't have to do that. Whatever is comfortable for you, whatever feels good. So really tune in. You don't want to hurt yourself here. Just to rest the hands on the ground if that's what's comfortable. Keep it nice and fluid. Just keep the hips moving, the buttocks, the pelvis. Bend those knees, alternating bending knees. Pressing into the hands, bouncing, swaying. Just bending forward, allowing the body to move in a way that feels natural to you. Now make sure that you're coming forward from the hips. Okay, now bending the knees, we're going to clasp those hands behind the back again. Just taking the head towards the floor, not towards the knees, towards the floor. Now obviously, I am bending 
very far forward and my legs are straight. You don't have to do this. Bend those knees. Only come as far forward as is comfortable. So placing the hands on the ground, we're going to take the feet together now and come up into a gentle chair pose, okay? So knees together, feet together. We're going to tuck the pelvis slightly under. So just being careful what we're doing here. And then coming back straight up and, and then into a back bend. Again, only as much as is comfortable. Navel back to the spine. We come back into a forward fold. So just bouncing, releasing. Now this feels fantastic for me. And as I said, I am being vigorous, but you don't have to do this. Holding on to the opposite elbows, fingers down, whatever works. So now I'm just coming into a twisted chair pose, okay? So making sure we're taking that navel back to the spine. We're taking the elbow and we're just crossing it, taking it across the body. Now this is not suitable for pregnancy. This is a closed twist. But it's actually going to activate the pancreas and the kidneys. It's a lovely detoxifying pose. And oh my goodness, it really stretches out that back and neck. You're going to feel that along the length of the spine, releasing every one of those vertebrae as we just change over sides, okay? So we're going to hold that for five breaths each side or as you want for as long as you want on either side. And then coming back up into that back bend. So just releasing and back down into the forward bend. Enjoying a little bounce here. Coming back to that twisted chair pose. Okay. Pravita Utkanasana. Revolve chair pose. Back to centre. We align again. Gentle back bend. Taking that as far as you want. Back to centre chair. And over to the side. Paravrita Utkanasana. And we're just extending that top elbow up and back. Back to center. Just taking a few seconds here in mountain pose. And then we come back into forward fold. So bouncing, bouncing. Really releasing and relaxing that entire spine. It feels so nice. So now we're just going to place the right hand in front of the right foot and extend that left hand up. Now again, this is quite advanced the way I'm doing this. If you want to take the hand to the thigh or the shin or the ankle, that's fine. Or you may want to use a block. If you want something more advanced, you can take the left hand behind in a semi-bind. You can take that behind the hips, okay? And again, looking up over the shoulder if the neck allows. If it doesn't, just look wherever is comfortable for you. So just realigning shaking out those knees and we're changing over sides so this time left hand in front of the left foot or on the shin or the thigh and placing that right hand up looking up towards the thumb that's our drishti our point of focus we can enjoy a bind here if we want taking that right hand over to the left thigh if it's available if it's not do not worry whatever is comfortable for you but again this is just relaxing, releasing the entire length of that spine, lumbar, thoracic, cervical, all the way up. And as we just very slowly uncurl back up to Tadarasana, taking it into a gentle back bend if that's where we're at. Okay, looking up, clasping those hands behind the back again, taking the shoulders towards each other, just squeezing it out, opening up the chest and heart for breathing. And then a more advanced back bend. Again, this may or may not be available to you. Placing the hands in the hips, pushing forward from the chest, and then alternating, coming forward again into that forward bend. Now, becoming aware of how much closer you are coming to the ground, okay? So you may have started off touching the thighs and now you're on the shins. You may still be on the thighs, but you'll certainly be a lot more open and the spine will be lengthened with all of these gorgeous forward folds, okay? Just bending those knees, bouncing and swaying, pendulum pose, bending the knees, alternating, coming up to Tadasana, into back bend down into revolve chair pose again and this is absolutely fantastic not only does it strengthen those calves and thigh muscles fantastic for the buttocks as well but it does activate the pancreas and the kidneys and it's fantastic for lengthening and stretching out that spine if you've been hunched up all day 
coming back into our forward fold. Now, if it is available, we're going to grab the two big toes with the two fingers, okay? So taking that head, when we're taking the head down, we're taking it towards the ground, not towards the knees. Coming back into revolved chair pose, we begin in chair and then we take the navel back to the spine and we twist round to the side. So taking that elbow up, rotating it up and back and we're looking up and back over the right shoulder if it's available. Placing the hands back down, forward fold, up into chair, slowly coming up into extended to dasana, urva has dasana and onto all fours and then we're just going to pop up into Adho Mokas Vanasana, downward facing dog. So alternating knees, first dog of the day. Take the shoulders back and down away from the ears, pushing into the hands. So just having a bounce here, just relaxing. And then we're going to extend that right leg up and over if it's available. And pop ourselves into Pigeon Pose, Ekapada Raja Kapitasana. Okay. So from here, we're just going to stretch out the neck again, all right? So we're going to take the left hand, take it to the head, take the right hand to the shoulder and just lengthen and extend that neck, pulling them in opposite directions. Taking the head up, taking it down, just moving in a way that's comfortable for you. But again, just focusing back on that neck and opening it up. So taking the left hand, sorry, the right hand to the head, the left hand to the left shoulder, Pulling away gently and extending, just whatever's comfortable, looking up, looking down, side to side, opening and releasing. Back onto the hands, popping up into Adho Mokas Vanasana, downward facing dog, place the feet, enjoy the bounce, release those hips, release the pelvis. Okay, bending the knees, relaxing into it. Really, you don't have to stay still in this pose not about perfection it's about fluidity and taking the left leg up taking the heel to the buttocks if it's available and forward into pigeon pose again placing the fingertips either side of the hips and just relaxing into pigeon so just moving that neck around remember it's about fluidity it's about release just relax and release if pigeon is not available to you, you can bend that back knee and just come into a mermaid as well. Okay, whatever is comfortable for you. This is a releasing sequence. So moving towards the end, we're just coming into Baddha Kanasana here. Bound angle pose, so bringing the soles of the feet together, hands in a basket, pushing down with the feet, pulling up with the hands, and we're looking in opposite directions. Okay, so again, releasing that neck. If it's available, walk the hands forward. If you have a bolster, you can place it in front of you and you can place the forehead on the bolster here. I am enjoying a little bounce, as you see, just releasing, relaxing with each exhale, with each bounce, opening up a little bit more. And just resting into it. So we're coming forward for you from the hips, remember. Okay. We can also be bouncing those knees open. Popping forwards and backwards here from the hips. Spend as much time in Baddha Konasana as is comfortable and then relax into Savasana. Now for my Savasana, I have chosen reclined Baddha Konasana here with the soles of the feet together. You can put props under the knees if that's comfortable, relaxing however you wish. And when you're ready, roll onto your side and finish. <laughs>